is going to who is going to tell me what we studied yesterday Yes, Vicky. I am waiting for your answer, beta. Ma'am, uh, we have uh, studied yesterday that what are lysosomes, types of uh, chloroplast, leu leucoplast. Ma'am, your voice is not coming. Your ah, mic is muted. Great, great, great. So, uh, uh, I can see Dhruvanshi or Kashish also raised hand. So, who is now going to tell me what we are going to study today? What is the only part that is left in our chapter, cell chapter? Yes, Kashish? Yes, ma'am. What ma is yesterday part? we... Yesterday what we studied is told by uh, uh, Vicky. I am asking what we are going to study today. We told you, I told you. Ma'am, today's study is nuclear. Very good. Yes, ma'am. So, today we will start our class with a very nice video. And then I will teach you because uh, why I prefer videos? Because in videos, we see things three dimensional. And when we look into something, those images, those big things are impregnated in our mind. And it will help us to. Uh, like uh, look into it very properly. So I'm going to share the screen. If at any point sound is not audible or you cannot see the screen, please let me know. Okay. So with your permission, I am sharing the video for structure and function of nucleus. Is the screen visible, Beta? Yes, ma'am. Oh. Yes, ma'am. So let me share it and uh, like uh, let me share the screen uh, optimally for the video clips. Wait for a moment. Nucleus. Ultra structure and function. I hope the uh, screen is uh, visible to all of you and sound is yes, fully audible. Okay, ma'am. Please let's have a look. Part one. The nucleus is composed of various structures, namely nuclear envelope, nucleoplasm or nuclear sap, nuclear matrix chromatin, and nucleolus. The nuclear membrane forms an envelope-like structure around the nuclear contents and is commonly known as the nuclear envelope. The nuclear envelope separates the nucleoplasm from the cytoplasm. The electron microscopic studies of the nuclear envelope have shown that it is composed of two unit membranes, an outer membrane and an inner membrane. Each membrane is about 75 to 90 angstroms thick and lipoproteinous in nature. The outer and inner nuclear membranes remain separate. What do we mean by this word lipoproteinaceous in nature is better? It is made up of lipid and protein. That's lipid and protein together we call it lipoproteinaceous in nature. Understood everyone? Yes ma'am. Yes ma'am. Okay. Yes ma'am. Right. Let's look at it. created by a space known as perinuclear space. The outer nuclear membrane often remains rough due to the presence of ribosomes on its surface. Sometimes, it remains continuous with the membranes of the endoplasmic reticulum, 
Golgi complex, mitochondria, etc. The inner nuclear membrane contains no ribosomes and sometimes it also remains associated with the chromatin. Further, the nuclear membrane is followed by a supporting membrane of a uniform thickness known as fibrous lamina, which is 300 angstrom in thickness. At certain places, the nuclear envelope is interrupted by the presence of small structures called nuclear pores. The number of pores for a particular nucleus is variable and often depends on the species and type of the cell. Watson, 1959, has calculated the nuclear pores of the mammalian cells as 10% of the total surface area of the nucleus. The nuclear pores are octagonal in shape and have a diameter of 600 angstroms. These are enclosed by a circular structure known as annuli. The pores and the annuli are collectively known to form the pore complex. The pore complex. So, who is going to tell me why nuclear pore cannot be simply a hole? Why it required to have annuli and the pore complex structure? Any idea? Anyone? Yes, Ayushi? Ma'am, because if it will be a simply pore, then it will allow all the substances to pass without any semi-permeability. Very good. Very good, Vida. And we know inside nucleus, the most important part of cell is present. That is the DNA, isn't it? So, obviously, to have kind of control over the movement of particle in and out, this pore complex plays the important role. Very good, Vida. Let's uh, look ahead. Complex remains arranged hexagonally on surface of the nuclear envelope. The annuli have an outer diameter of 1200 angstroms and an inner diameter between 0 and 400 angstroms. In certain cases, the pore complex remains covered by a thin membrane or septum which may serve as a special structure for the selective permeability. The nuclear membranes of the nuclear envelope perform various functions for the nucleus, such as in certain cells like... This is how fast YouTube is with Brave. Notice how there's no pre-roll ads? And here's how you can see how much time you save with Brave. Look like oocytes. The nuclear membranes allow free exchange of ions between the nucleus and the cytoplasm, while certain nuclear membranes, as of the cells of the salivary glands of Drosophila, act as a barrier for diffusion of substances and even the ions of potassium, sodium and chlorine. The nuclear pores are the pathways for the exchange of the macromolecules. The pores help in exchange of materials between nuclear plasm, nuclear fluid, and cytoplasm. The ribonuclear proteins, RNP, granules lead the nucleus through nuclear pores from the nuclear plasm to the cytoplasm. The annuli regulate the exchange of the macromolecules through the pore complex according to their chemical nature and size. The permeability of the pore complex depends on the type and metabolic state of the cell. The nuclear envelope disappears during cell division and reappears during nuclear reorganization. The space between the nuclear envelope and the nucleolus is filled by a transparent, semi-solid, granular and slightly acidophilic ground substance or the matrix known as the nuclear sap or nucleoplasm or karyolins. The nuclear components 
such as the chromatin threads and the nucleolus, remain suspended in the nucleoplasm. The nucleoplasm has a complex chemical composition. It is composed mainly of the nucleoproteins, but it also contains other inorganic and organic substances, such as nucleic acids, proteins, enzymes, and minerals. The common nucleic acids of the nucleoplasm are the DNA and RNA. Both may occur in the macromolecular state or in the form of the monomer nucleotides. The nucleoproteins of the nucleoplasm. I want to ask one simple question. Sorry, I'm interacting in between because I think these are the parts which I want to say. This, they are uh, giving you information as well as the image. Uh, such kind of image is difficult to find in uh, drawing and all. Uh, but I just want to conclude here that the density of nucleo nucleoplasm is a bit more dense than the cytoplasm. So next question I wish to ask to all of you, Vita, that what do you think? Do we have RNA in the nucleus or DNA in the nucleus? Yes, Vicky? From DNA. So, you think no nu in nu uh, nucleus, there is no RNA? Yes, Ayushi, what do you think, Beta? Ma'am, DNA, but some amount of RNA is also present. Okay. So, why? Because our genetic material is DNA, then why we require uh, RNA inside this nucleus? Any idea, anyone? Let me tell you. Obviously, our main yeah. genetic material. Yes, Vicky, bolo. Ma'am, DNA is located in nucleus and RNA is located in cytoplasm. No, beta. It's not always true. It is not at hmm. all always true. Inside DNA, DNA is also... capable for self-replication. No, no, no. Not like that. In uh, nu Inside nucleus, there is some piece of RNA which is mainly called messenger RNA. Have you ever wondered that who is, which cell organelle is responsible for synthesis of protein in the cell? Ribosome. Very good. Where is it located? Where is it located? Tell me. Ma'am, in cytoplasm. Okay. And who will guide this uh, like uh, uh, molecule uh, ribosomes to produce protein. Who will give guidance to the molecules to produce protein? mRNA. Uh -huh. But uh, ultimately, mRNA is produced from who? What? RNA. RNA. Protein. Who is the, uh, like what I can say, is having blueprint of the whole organism in it? Ma'am, yes, chromatin material. Chromatin material. It is in our case, it is DNA. Obviously, DNA. virus genetic material, if it is RNA, it can be RNA. So, how DNA can reach to ribosome and tell ribosome that you produce this protein, this protein, this protein? Not possible, na? अगर डीएनए न्यूक्लियस में से निकल के राइबोसोम तक जाएगा और वापस आएगा वापस से जाएगा डोंट यू थिंक देयर आर चांसेस ऑफ ब्रेकेज ऑफ डीएनए और अगर डीएनए का एक पार्ट ब्रेक हो गया दैट मींस इफ दैट पार्ट इज रिस्पांसिबल फॉर डिसाइडिंग सम कैरेक्टर वो तो कैरेक्टर ही चला जाएगा ना व्हाट डू यू फील यस मैम यस मैम सो डीएनए डजंट गो समवेयर लेट मी गिव यू अ वेरी सिंपल एग्जांपल आप सब लोगों को पता चल जाएगा समझो आपको फ्रेंड्स के कंप्यूटर में एक मूवी है ठीक है आप लोगों को वो मूवी लाके घर पे देखनी है आप फ्रेंड की हार्ड डिस्क उठा के लाते हो पूरी सीपीयू नो मैम क्या करते हो हम शेयर करा लेते हैं इजी वेरी इजी मैसेजर आ रहे हैं उतनी बड़ी डीएनए में देर आर थाउजेंड अदर इंफॉर्मेशन जितनी मुझे चाहिए 
that much is copied in the messenger rna and messenger rna is coming out from nucleus and it is reaching up to the ribosome so why we call it messenger rna because it is carrying the message of dna to the ribosome understood so aise misconception hame nahi rakhni hai beta ki inside nucleus we have only dna rna is also there but they are helping they are not the main genetic material in our case in case of eukaryotes the obviously also in prokaryotes because only in case of virus you can see that the genetic material is rna and virus is not included in a virus are not included in prokaryotes they are something else it uh, separate so obviously we can say if anyone is asking you this question you will say in nucleus dna is there as a main genetic material but other than that rna is also present is it clear to everyone yes ma'am chalo yes, yes, look into the video i hope you people are enjoying looking into the video is it yes, help, helping you people yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am can be categorized as histone a basic protein and non histone or acidic protein The proteins which take basic stain are known as the basic proteins. The most important basic proteins of the nucleus are nucleoproteins and the nucleohistones. The acidic proteins either occur in the nucleoplasm or in the chromatin. The most abundant acidic proteins of the euchromatin are the phosphoproteins so again i wish to say something over here uh, they are talking about different proteins so if you go back you can uh, see this structure uh, this structure i hope you can see this structure everyone is my screen visible yes, pointer yes ma'am yes ma'am really why they require such kind of proteins which are pink in color and this uh, dna piece which is blue in color is wrapped around it why they require such system where proteins dna is wrapped around proteins i can see two person is uh, this time i'll give ayushi the first chance bolo ayushi ma'am in double stranded dna the both of the side of the dna are negative so they will repel from each other but the histone protein which have positive side so it will help to bind the double stranded of the dna very good any other point anyone that is very good observation have you ever bought thread from any store yes ma'am yes ma'am do they give you thread in uh, uncoiled condition or they wrap it around something and mm, wrap it wrap it around something why they wrap it around Just something mam bhi khul na jaye isliye aur khulega to kya problem hogi mam wo bahut sari gaathi aa jayegi to hum usko sahi nahi kar sakte aur gaath aa jayegi to to hum kya kya hoga What will happen? और ज़्यादा कड़क होती जाएगी मैम और ज़्यादा बनती जाएगी। Confusion तो होगा ही ऊपर से वो धागा टूट सकता है डूबती हुई तो। टूट सकता है। So can yes, we afford DNA to break? Consider करो part that part of DNA is talking about hair. If that part is deleted, you will be like be born without hair, no? Risky. and it can be deadly also fun apart joke apart it can be very, uh, very risky consider situation of a plant without chlorophyll if the genes or the part of dna responsible for production of uh, this one what i can say uh, chlorophyll is deleted by some means in plant the plant will be produced without chlorophyll and they do not know to go to market and buy food and eat so what obviously kya hoga fir uske wajah se what will happen plant we will starve and die you know plant will die yes mar jayenge sabhi so such things we cannot allow that's why histone proteins are there and it is a coiled structure 
Uh, have you ever heard about E. coli bacteria? Yes, ma'am. It's yes, in the intestine. Do you know it is microscopic? We cannot see it under our naked eyes. Yes, ma'am. We cannot Anna, see. We cannot but see if you eyes. take out its DNA, if you take out its DNA and try to spread it, it will be having a length of one point four meter. How is that possible? Can be possible, ma'am. When DNA is is too much compressed in our cell, the length of DNA. Bola jata hai human cell ke andar jitni DNA hai. वो अर्थ को चारों ओर से इफ आई एम टेकिंग अ पीस ऑफ डीएनए ऑफ ह्यूमन इन अ सेल इट कैन टेक द वन राउंड और टू राउंड ऑफ द अर्थ कैन यू अंडरस्टैंड हाउ स्मॉल इज अ सेल ऑफ ह्यूमन यस मैम आप समझ रहे हो सो such level of miniaturization today we talk about miniaturization din by din now the uh, phone i have it's having whole computer in it once upon a time it was not possible this is the age of miniaturization in biology we are working with miniaturization since ages so the whole long dna is packed 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 for the packed 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 to give you a compact structure and for that packing to ensure that one point i she has pointed out very nice one that negatively charged dna should not repel from each other to balance that positively charged that is basic histone proteins are there apart from that another reason is while packing they should not entangle that's why these proteins are there so that is how our dna exists in our cell now they talk about they will tell you about different types of dna dna can exist in the form of chromatin reticulum it can exist in the form of chromosomes what is the difference between chromatin reticulum and chromosome have you ever heard about these two words any idea are they same thing or different thing yes ayushi Ma'am, they are different thing because chromatin reticulum is an unorganized form of chromosome, whereas chromosome is an organized form. So then we cannot call them different thing. They are two form of the same thing. Yes, Ashwi, you want to add anything further, Rita? Ma'am, uh, chromatin materials are condensed chromosomes. No, no. So they are. Ulta so bola. Uh, chromosomes are condensed chromatin. Is it? So they are ultimately chromosomes only. They are ultimately chromosomes only. But when why then question ही आता है कि क्यों भाई दो दो form में like exist करता है? Yes, Vicky, what do you want to say? Ma'am, uh, chromatin reticulum has thin, long, uncoiled structure, and uh, chromosomes have thick, compact, ribbon-like structure. Very good. So. Uh, why they need to exist in two forms? क्या जरूरत है फिर? Why cannot they exist in single form? Chromosomes ही रहे क्यों confuse करते हैं बच्चों को? Have you ever thought? See देखो uh, let me tell you in biology I personally teach biology this is my sixteenth year I am teaching biology. The major mistake people do while they study biology is they mug up things. The beauty of biology is not about mugging up things. As a teacher, may I ask you, what information do you have? If you take any good book or any study material, it will have everything written about cell. Out of that, you may be able to uh, understand seventy percent of the substances by yourself. For rest of the substances, you will be requiring my help. Help. So I am there to help you. But that is not the sole concept of studying biology. We need to think about each and every aspect. क्या आपने कभी सोचा है? You all of you, many of you must be heard about these two words. एक प्रोमोसोम प्रोमेटिंग में. Why they need to exist in two forms? Why? What is the necessity? 
मैम मैं आई यस आयुषी मैम आई थिंक व्हेन द रिप्रोडक्शन इज नॉट अकरिंग इन द सेल देन द मटेरियल इज स्टोर्ड इन एन अनकॉइल्ड फॉर्म बट व्हेन ड्यूरिंग द टाइम ऑफ रिप्रोडक्शन इट अरेंज एंड फॉर्म्स द क्रोमोसोम फ्रॉम यू तभी आपकी दिमाग के बोलते हैं ना ताले खुल जाएंगे एंड यू विल बी लर्निंग योरसेल्फ है ना यशवी क्यों सेल डिवीजन में वो क्रोमोसोम फॉर्म में रहता है मैम क्योंकि वो उसका सिंपलर फॉर्म है नो समझो आपके पास चार कलर के धागे ओके एंड समवन टोल्ड यू दैट यू नीड टू सेपरेट देम तो आपको पता है मम्मी मतलब आई डोंट नो योर मदर्स डू इट और नॉट दुकान से वो लिया कुछ लाने के बाद सबसे पहला काम क्या करते हैं उसको कहीं हाथ में या पैर में लेके लपेट लेते हैं टू मेक देम बॉल्स ऑफ वुल्स हैव यू एवर सीन दिस थिंग्स यस यस मैम सो व्हेन यू नीड टू डिवाइड द जेनेटिक मटेरियल ऑफ अ सेल इनटू टू सेल और फोर सेल Do you think the loose entangled structure can be divided with into two or three parts without any hassle? Kisi hassle ke bagair kya hum hata sakenge usko do hisse mein ya teen hisse mein? What do you think, Yashvi? Can we do that? No, ma'am. Wo ulag jayenge wapas se. So that is why at the time of cell division, what happens is. there needs to be coiling of the chromatin reticulum to form stick like compact structure called chromosome ab dusra question ye aata hai ki mam bhale wo fir chromosome condition mein hi rahe why it needs to again come back into chromatin reticulum any idea anyone why it needs to come back up into the form of chromatin can reticulum can you repeat yes ayushi Ma'am, can you repeat your question? I asked that we understood this. I hope everyone understood that why chromatin reticulum needs to coil and form compact stick-like structures called chromosome at the time of cell division. Why is it necessary? Rutu, today you are very silent. What happened, Vita? Understood? Am I audible to all of you clearly? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Rudu, what happened to you today? Nothing, ma'am. Nothing. No response at all. You are silently listening today. Understood? Why we need to coil the chromatin reticulum and make them chromosomes at the time of cell division? Why is it necessary? Did you understand? Ma'am, ma'am, can you please, ma'am, can you please repeat? क्रोमोजोमेटिन को क्यों क्रोमोजोम में बदलने की जरूरत है वो to divide this uh, cell properly kyunki kabhi kabhi aisa ho jata hai ki uh, cell kabhi thik tarah se divide nahi ho pata hai we nucleus kisi mein do chale jate hain uh, ek kisi mein nahi jata isliye nucleus kaise do ja sakte beta nucleus nahi ja sakte na nucleus to ek hi hota hai agar cell mein matlab wo dna material mam ha to hame wo bolna hai It's not like that. So you are not getting my point, Ruvanchi. The point is about Q who uncoiled rehta hai or Q coiled rehta hai. I mean to say, agar DNA uncoiled chromatin form me raha, to at the time of cell division, jab wo separate honge, separation ke time pe wo ek dusre se ulag jayenge. They will get entangled amongst themselves. 
और जब वो उनको खींचा जाएगा दे कैन ब्रेक चार अलग कलर के धागे को आप रील के अंदर रखो आप जितनी फटाफट उनमें से दो को एक साइड दो को दूसरे साइड रख सकते हो अगर वो खुले हुए बिखरे हुए पड़े हुए हैं कैन यू डू दैट नो मैम सो द सेम रीजन फॉर द सेम रीजन क्रोमेटिन रेटिकुलम जो अवेलेबल है उसको सेल डिविजन के टाइम पे कॉयल होके क्रोमोसोम फॉर्म में जाना जरूरी है सो so दैट दे डू नॉट गेट इंटेंगल्ड विथ ईच अदर एंड एट द टाइम ऑफ सेल डिविजन यस यश मैम यस मैम प्लीज रिपीट व्हाट यू सेड अरे बाप रे व्हाई इट्स इज इट माय नेटवर्क प्रॉब्लम और योर नेटवर्क प्रॉब्लम नो मैम इट्स माय नेटवर्क प्रॉब्लम ओके कैन एनीवन रिपीट इट फॉर मी सो दैट आई कैन कंफर्म कि कांसेप्ट उसको समझ में आ गया है can anyone do this favor to me aur aap bhi ek bar khud bol loge wish uh, ayushi ma'am, want to can you ma'am can you say what i have to repeat uh rutu ke rutu bol rahi hai yes rutu i just wanted to say why chromatin needs to be coiled into chromosomes at the time of cell division bolo rutu the chromatin needs to be entangled during the time of cell division because so that it so it that it does not get tangled and there will be no danger of breakage of dna material understood yashvi very clearly and precisely rutu answered this so the significance of existence of dna in the form of chromosome is all right इसमें कोई किसी को डाउट है अभी क्यों क्रोमोसोम बनता है वो कॉयल होके एनीवन नो मैम नो तो अब मेरी नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन ये है देन इट कैन रिमेन ऑलवेज कॉयल ना इट कैन स्टे इन क्रोमोसोम फॉर्म ओनली क्या जरूरत है उसको क्रोमेटिन बनने की व्हाट इज द नेसेसिटी ऑफ गेटिंग कन्वर्टेड इन द फॉर्म ऑफ क्रोमेटिन let me tell you if when it is present in the form of chromatin it may be very good kya ek dhaga jo reel mein atka hua hai usko leke aap silai kar sakte ho silai karne ke liye aapko usko kholna padega na yes or no yes yes ma'am yes ma'am hai na similar way when cells are responsible for production of proteins messenger rna dna is performing some work it cannot remain in the form of a stick like structure which is compact kyu nahi reh sakta hai consider karo i'll give you one example why i will draw one diagram which will clarify your uh, thought consider this is the dna material okay if this long dna material is present like this it is chromatin but if it is compactly arranged into a strict like structure it will be known as chromosome but when it is compactly arranged in a very stick like structure don't you feel that the part which is present inside that is present here inside is not getting exposed aapko aisa nahi lag raha hai ki wo to bahar ka hi aayega hi nahi how can we uh, replicate that part don't you feel so beta yes ma'am yes ma'am yes, andar ka jo hissa hai we cannot do that no so for functionality in normal cell when the cell is not dividing it need to be uncoiled to have a chromatin reticulum structure or cell division se pehle usko kya ho jana padega chromosome ban jana sabhi so both of the structures are having their own significance aisa nahi hai ke uh, it can be chromatin it can be chromosome depending on in which situation cell is going on usko apna apna maintain karna padta hai status but both of them are same thing only they are two different forms of dna understood everyone is it yes, clear chal we will look into the video further
obesic proteins and non-histone or acidic proteins. The proteins which take basic stain are known as the basic proteins. The most important basic proteins of the nucleus are nucleoproteins and the nucleohistones. The acidic proteins either occur in the nucleoplasm or in the chromatin. The most abundant acidic proteins of the euchromatin are the phosphoproteins. The nucleoplasm contains many enzymes which are necessary for the synthesis of the DNA and RNA. Most of the nuclear enzymes are composed of non-histone acidic proteins. The most important nuclear enzymes are the DNA polymerase, RNA polymerase, NAD synthetase, nucleoside triphosphatase, adenosine diaminase, nucleoside phosphorylase, QNase, aldolase, enolase, 3 phosphoglyceraldehyde, dehydrogenase, and pyruvate kinase. The nucleoplasm also contains cofactors and coenzymes. So, class, one thing I must mention they are talking about so many enzymes, but you do not worry at all. Ye sabhi cheeze aapko, jaise jaise inki functions aegi, you will be able to understand about them, you will know about them. Currently, if you do not remember about them, it's all right. There is no problem. Okay? Grammarly does more than catch errors. With Grammarly, you can find really good, no, perfect words that make your writing sharp or explicit or excellent or distinctive. As ED. Actually, let me uh, reshare once again. Nineteen fifty five, the nucleoplasm contains small lipid content. The nucleoplasm also contains several inorganic compounds such as phosphorus, potassium, sodium, calcium and magnesium. The nucleoplasm performs certain functions such as supporting the chromatin material and nucleolus and providing turgidity to the nucleus. It is the site of synthesis of DNA, RNA and ribosomal subunits. Nuclear matrix is a network of fine crisscrossing protein containing fibrils which are joined to the nuclear envelope by their ends. On the periphery, below the nuclear envelope, nuclear matrix forms a dense fibrous layer called nuclear lamina. The nuclear matrix maintains the shape of the nucleus. Chromatin fibers are anchored to the nuclear matrix. The machinery for various nuclear activities such as replication and transcription is associated with the nuclear matrix. The nucleoplasm contains many thread-like coiled and much elongated structures which take readily the basic stains such as the basic fuchsin. These thread-like structures are known as the chromatin substance or the chromatin fiber. During the cell division, chromatin fibers become thick ribbon-like structures which are known as the chromosomes. Chemically, chromatin consists of DNA and proteins. A small quantity of RNA may also be present. Most of the protein of chromatin is histone, but the non-histone proteins 
are also present. The protein DNA weight ratio averages about 1 is to 1. The fibers of the chromatin are twisted, fine, anastomose, and uniformly distributed in the nucleoplasm. Two types of chromatin material have been recognized, heterochromatin and euchromatin. The darkly stained, condensed region of the chromatin is known as heterochromatin. The heterochromatin occurs around the nucleolus and at the periphery. It is supposed to be metabolically and genetically inert because it contains comparatively small amounts of DNA and a large amount of RNA. The light-stained and diffuse region of the chromatin is known as a euchromatin. The euchromatin contains comparatively large amounts of DNA. Heterochromatin remains tightly coiled during interphase while euchromatin remains loosely coiled forming a network. The former is a condensed region of chromatin, whereas the latter is a diffused region. Heterochromatin has granules of various sizes, whereas euchromatin does not have granules. Besides, heterochromatin is present in certain places in chromatin, while euchromatin forms the bulk of the chromatin. Heterochromatin is supposed to be genetically inert and does not take part in transcription. It replicates late in the S phase. On the other hand, euchromatin is genetically active and only a portion of it associated with acid proteins takes part in transcription. It replicates early. So, uh, I just want to uh, ask you the gist and let me tell you that nucleus is made up of four parts. What are the four parts? What we learned from video that what are the four parts in the, of the nucleus? Who is going? May I? Yes, Vicky. Ma'am, nuclear envelope, nucleoplasm, then nuclear matrix, chromatin, and nucleolus. So in video, nucleolus was missing. Let me tell you, it is a very dense structure made up of proteinaceous substance and this is responsible for production of ribosome. Ribosome is produced in nucleolus. At the time of cell division beta, uh, mitosis or meiosis whatsoever type is, you will be able to know that nucleus cannot exist. Because obviously, if the nucleus is in so we cannot divide the content of cell into two equal half. So the nuclear membrane get dissolved and nucleolus add, get attached with a specific chromosome. And that is the way it is divided into two cells. So is there any question from nucleus? Can I consider that we completed the part nucleus? But still, yes, we need to talk about chromosomes. Yes, beta. Ma'am, video mein ek carrier lymph is a word. Aaya tha. Uska matlab kya hota hai? Carrier lymph means uh, uh, carrier lymph means nothing but the nucleoplasm. Bit. Nucleoplasm ko yellow log carrier lymph bol rahe. Okay, ma'am. Yes, beta. Oh, ma'am, in the last minute, there was a chromosome and nucleus, but I didn't know what was going on. Which one? What was it? Last minute, there was a nucleus and chromosome related to some structures. But you chromatin, chromatin and heterochromatin. That part, I will tell you. Uh, I am definitely going to tell you. Uh, see, uh, uh, when we stain chromosomes, no? If we stain or color chromosomes, 
some parts are very darkly stained and some part are very lightly stained in a chromosome okay means they are uh, having dark color and the other part is having light color so obviously uh, if a part is having dark color that part is highly dense and not that much active that dark color part is known as heterochromatin and the other one is known as euchromatin which is highly active part of the chromosome you must be uh, must not be aware of rather to say that the amount of dna we have 100% of that dna does not code for protein some part are there just for the protection of other part pata hai pehle ke zamane mein raja maharaja jo hote the unke paas 100 rooms hote the वो रात को कौन से रूम में सोने जाने वाले होते हैं किसको किसी को पता नहीं होता ऐसा वो क्यों करते थे ताकि रात को अगर कोई उनको मारना चाहे तो दे गेट कंफ्यूज कि पता नहीं राजा कहाँ सोया है सिमिलरली इन केस ऑफ डीएनए इफ वी रिक्वायर्ड दिस मच डीएनए द डीएनए साइज इज दिस मच व्हाई बिकॉज इफ देर इज एनी प्रॉब्लम अकरिंग इन दिस दिस मच लंबा डीएनए देन this specific part which is very very important can be protected this is just for the purpose of protection so the like uh, uh, when we talk about heterochromatin and euchromatin euchromatin is the active part of chromosome which is continuously producing proteins that's why its color is different from the euchromatin they said that only anything else any more doubt class no ma'am no doubt no ma'am no ma'am great so uh, we almost completed the uh, uh, content of nucleus only a few part like i must say a tiny bit of part is left that is uh, structure of chromosome uh, let me uh, let us continue with the structure of chromosome for that also i have an excellent video available with me and uh, these are the things i like kind of keep on searching and searching and i get them because they are very rare uh, when like uh, you can uh, like get thousand of definitions in a very good single resource so i am sharing screen for the structure of chromosomes and do not worry after finishing all these two videos we can again go look into the study material available with us and we can confirm if we can understand the whole part okay so i am playing the video is my screen visible to all of you beta yes ma'am oh, visible yes ma'am yes, ma visible so this will not be very long one it will be a very short one but very descriptive one i hope screen is properly visible and sound is audible to you yes ma'am great yes ma'am yes ma'am we are asked to fit a thread of 1 meter in this small box it will be easy if we simply coil the thread and place it inside Did you know that a similar approach is taken by our cells? Let's see how. We know that the long stretch of DNA is coiled to a great extent to fit inside the tiny nucleus. This process of coiling gives rise to the chromatid structure. It's a thread-like mesh that we find in the nucleus of a metabolically active cell. The chromatids gain a typical classical structure which looks somewhat like this. It's seen during cell division. And these are nothing but the chromosomes. But tell me, do all chromosomes look exactly like this? Do all the 46 chromosomes look the same? If yes, then why do we say that there are 23 pairs of chromosomes? What helps us categorize these chromosomes as pairs? Well, I hope everyone knows that human being is having forty-six chromosome in them. 
क्लास है ना यस मैम हाँ ग्रेट so they are referring about human chromosomes but it is applicable to all types of organisms all chromosomes are not exactly like one another they come in types depending upon their structure or shapes and functions the first basis for classification is shapes we know this is the structure of a typical chromosome and is this a single chromosome that's right the difference is that this chromosome is not duplicated while this one has a duplicated copy attached to itself so these are the duplicated sister chromatids which are attached to the same chromosome now to understand the types let's first understand the typical structure here these two regions are called the arms of the chromosome this arm is named as the p arm and this is known as the q arm so how do we recognize which is the p and which is the q arm is it based on their positions no nope. it depends on the size the smaller arm is the p arm while the larger one is the q arm so this chromosome has one p and one q arm while this one has two p and two q arms now let's focus on this chromosome structure can you guess what the structure is called to which the arms are attached well this knot like structure is called centromere it's the portion of dna that acts as a link between the two sister chromatids but that's not its sole purpose its major function is the attachment of spindle fibers during the cell division process and let me tell you one more interesting use of the centromere It's the position of the centromere that helps us categorize the chromosomes into four types. The four types include metacentric, submetacentric, acrocentric, and telocentric chromosomes. Let's have a look at the structures of each type. Aren't these simple to understand? This one is called metacentric type. As we can see, the centromere is placed almost exactly at the center. the two arms seem almost of the same length we can say that the centromere is placed somewhat in the middle of the complete structure now the next type is the submetacentric here the centromere is placed slightly away from the center as a result the two arms of the chromosome appear unequal the next type is the acrocentric in this the centromere is seen almost towards the end region The term acro in Greek relates to peak. Does the name acrocentric refers to the type where the centromere is near the terminal region? Lastly, what we see is that the centromere is present at the extreme end. That is, the centromere is placed at the telomeric region. Hence the name telocentric. However, these chromosomes are not found in humans. The human karyotype lacks telocentric chromosomes. But what is karyotype you may ask? Well, it's one way of representing all the chromosomes found in a cell. This is how chromosomes are classified on the basis of their structures or shapes to be precise. Now let's have a look at the other type of classification. This is a much simpler type of classification. Here the chromosomes are classified whether they are autosomes or sex chromosomes. Now what could these be? This is a representative image of a typical human karyotype. The chromosomes that pair from 1 to 22nd are called autosomes. That is they are not the sex chromosomes. To be precise, they have got no function to deal with the sex of the individual. The last pair however determines the sex of the person. So if the two are identical that is both are x and x then the individual is a female. And what if both are different? In such a case when one chromosome is x and the other is y the individual is a male. This pair is the sex chromosomes. So the chromosomes which help in determining the sex of an individual are sex chromosomes or even called allosomes. The others which are from 1st to the 22nd pair 
are not the sex chromosomes. This makes them the autosomes. Both contain genes that code for proteins which make up our body. Now that we've understood the various types of chromosomes, can you tell me what helps in determining the sex of an individual? Is it only the chromosomes? Or is it some other factor too? Tune into the next part to understand the interesting concept of sex determination in various organisms. So, how was the video? Was it a good one? Yes, ma'am. But this is not all beta about chromosomes. We need to know a few things that we are going to discuss in our next class. We uh, hardly know about the chemical composition of the uh, chromosomes. Today we discuss type and the major structure, but we will go into detail of the micro level of chromosome in our next lecture. Till now, anyone any doubt? Class? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Okay. So then, great, beta. I am concluding this chapter uh, here, uh, lecture here. You join your next lecture uh, for tomorrow. And tomorrow we will finish this chapter by discussing the chromosome. And can we take the, take the uh, like quizzes or Kahoot quiz tomorrow itself or you want it to be done in the mon on Monday? Ma'am, on Monday. Okay. So tomorrow I request one thing. You go through. I am sorry. Uh, like.